Hello, my name is Olaya Chicarelli Bermudez, and I will be presenting the Jailer's Daughter's monologue from Two Noble Kinsmen by William Shakespeare. Why should I love this gentleman? Tis odds he never will affect me. I am base. My father, the mean keeper of his prison. And he a prince. Oh, to marry him is hopeless. To be his whore is witless. Out upon t What pushes are we young wenches driven to? And fifteen once has found us. First I saw him, I seeing thought him a goodly man. He has as much to please in him, if he please to bestow it so, as ever these eyes yet looked on. Next I pitied him, and, uh, and so would any young woman of my conscience, whoever dreamed or vowed her maidenhead to a young, handsome man. Oh, yeah. Then I loved him, extremely loved him, infinitely loved him. When I come in, in a morning to bring him water, first he bows his noble body, and then salutes me thus. Fair morrow, good maiden, may thy goodness get thee a happy, her husband. <laughs> Once he kissed me. I loved my lips the better ten days after. Oh, what he would do so every day. <laughs> he grieves much, and me as much to see his misery. What should I do to make him know I love him? Say I venture to set him free. What says the law then? <sighs> Thus much for law or kindred. <sighs> I will do it. And this night or tomorrow he shall love me. Hi, Mr. England. This is Allison, and I will be presenting to you a contemporary monologue from the play Barrier Islands as the character Janice. I don't like sharing, and I don't like others sharing with me. <sighs> Last February, bartender took my key, so I had to walk home. It was cold, but I barely felt it. I got home, realized my house keys are on the same keychain as my car keys. <sighs> I should have broken a window, called you, done anything to get inside, but I wasn't thinking clearly. I'm standing there by the door wondering what I should do. And I really need to pee. And then I wet my pants. And I thought, well, fuck, this sucks. I'm exhausted, I'm going to sleep. So I passed out on the front porch. When I got up the next morning, it really was freezing and I knew my foot was fucked. Turns out all the pee had gone down one leg and collected in my shoe. The toes were frozen stiff. I could barely get the shoe off. The ER doctor had to amputate three of them. And here I am, I feel much better. Now, not only do I have to live with that, I also have the comforting knowledge that you know, that I crippled myself in the stupidest, most degrading way possible. <laughs> I feel much better. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kayla Perez Ramsey, and I will be presenting a piece from the play Snake Bit by David Marshall Grant as the character Jennifer. I don't want to be an actress. I hate acting. I've always hated acting. It fills me with nothing but self-loathing. There, I said it. And, you know, you do your prayers, you know, your affirmations that you'll be like 
so filled with self-love that all that won't matter. <laughs> what am I saying? The whole thing's a joke. You know why I don't want to act? And don't tell Jonathan this. I've never told anyone this. I started to stutter. On stage, can you believe that? Honestly, I'd get to a word in the script, and when I came to it, I wouldn't be able to say it. I'd freeze every time I would come to the word. I couldn't get it out. I get fixated on a word. The last time I was playing the blind Mexican flower vendor in Streetcar Named Desire, don't ask why, and all I had to do was say flores para los muertos. There, I can say it now. Flores para los muertos. I had nothing else to say, just that. I sat around waiting all night. Flores para los muertos. Flores para los muertos. I couldn't say it. Now I can say it. Muertos. I couldn't say muertos. I ended up saying flores para los dead people. Blanche Dubois accused me of sabotaging her performance. All she wanted me to do was say the line right. That's what I was not getting paid to do. And Jonathan made me feel so. <laughs> you know, why don't I just leave him? <sighs> I really should just leave him. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bella Lippman and I will be performing Sophie's monologue from Boys by Ella Hickson. Do you, have you ever actually felt any uh, guilt? Because it's, it comes a bit of a surprise that um, you or one, I haven't actually or can't actually feel it. Like, it, like it's not something I can generate somehow, okay, I find myself actually trying to summon it, like, like trying to encourage myself, and even then, I can't do it. <laughs> A look at you. I sometimes actually make myself think of him. Like I, I force him into my head and and even then I I don't feel guilty. What kind of a person does that make me? And I keep t I keep telling myself it's because what we have is real meant to be that that we love each other I sat at his funeral looking at his parents and Benny but all I could think about it all I, I could feel was you Thank you. Hello, my name is Madeline Williams, and I will be presenting a monologue from a comedy of errors in the role of Adrienne. I, I, Antipholus, look strange and cramped. Some other mistress hath thy sweet aspects. I am not Adrienne, nor thy wife. The time was once when thou unurged wouldst vow that never words were music to thine ear, that never object pleasing in thine eye, that never touch well welcome to thy hand, that never meat sweet savored in thy taste, unless I spake or looked or touched or carved to thee. How comes it now, my husband, oh, how comes it, that thou art thus estranged from thyself? 
thyself, I call it being strange to me, that undividable, incorporate, am better than thy dear self's better part. Oh, do not tear thyself away from me. How dearly would it touch me to the quick shouldst thou but hear I were licentious? Wouldst thou not spit at me, and spurn at me, and hurl the name of husband in my face, and tear the stained skin off my harlot brow? And from my false hand, cut the wedding ring, and break it with a deep divorcing vow. I know thou canst, and therefore see thou do it. I am possessed with an adulterate blot. My blood is mingled with the crime of lust. For if we two be one, and thou play false, I do digest the poison of thy flesh, being strumpeted by thy contagion. Keep then far league, and truce with thy true bed. I live unstained, and thou undishonored. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jack McInhill, and this is Isayev's monologue from Don Negro. Life is too short to waste on, on pointless tasks. Why waste time getting clean if you're just going to get dirty again? The earth is made of dirt, and so are we. My wife. My wife cleans compulsively. And I tell her, I tell her you are going to wash your beautiful skin right off. She doesn't listen. I speak gibberish because people who speak the truth are killed or sent to Siberia, even though we have committed no crime. This man, you have committed a crime. You have ideas. And to have ideas is a very great crime in Russia. A good Russian, no ideas, only vodka. And if you feel an idea coming, a quick more vodka. <laughs> ideas. Kill Russians and vodka. But with vodka you die happy or at least stupid, which is more of the same. Ideas just make people miserable. And you, my friend, are going to be very, very miserable. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sterling Lindsay and I'm going to be performing Hamlet in Shakespeare's Hamlet. have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my life, forgone all custody of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition, that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me nothing but a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air. Look you, this brave o'erhanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why, it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is this. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. 
said to me. What is this quintessence of dust? Thank you. Hi, my name is Owen McCannell, and I'll be doing a piece from What I Did Last Summer by Albert Ramsdell Gurney as the character of Ted. Your father will say no! Ah! Sure, he'll say no. Look it, someday somebody ought to write a play about a Canadian kid who hangs around Americans while his dad takes care of their summer homes. Here's the story. First, he's friends with those kids, trading comic books with them, playing tennis with them, horsing around in the raft. Everything is hunky. Story. Then he starts growing hair in his mess. And what do you know, the plot thickens. Soon when he shows up to the tennis courts, he gets the fish eye for Mrs. Putnam. For even watching, for Christ's sake. And soon he feels creepy even going out on the beach. Like somehow it's out of bounds or something. And Let's suppose he wants to take out an American girl. My God! Suddenly it's like he wants the French kiss her and bang her and carry her up to Sass catch you on all on the first date. I don't know. All I know is that somebody ought to write about that someday. Thank you. But I do think it is their husbands' faults if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps, or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us. Or say they strike us, or scant our former having in despite, why, we have galls, and though we have some grace, yet we have some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell, and they have their palates, both for sweet and sour, as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus errs, it is so too. And have we not affections? Desires for sport and frailty as men have? Then let them use us well. Else let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Hello, my name is Ava Domenichelli, and I will be doing a monologue from An Intervention by Mike Bartlett. That doesn't matter. How she looks is not my problem. My problem is she is a sort of person who stands at the side of the party and doesn't get near doing anything interesting, not near breaking the rules. But instead, she'll take a picture of those that do, which I mean, if we're being honest, nine times out of 10 is me. And she'll take a picture and she'll send it out and comment some passive aggressive little thing like, looks like somebody was having a good time. You know what, it's not even a flattering picture ever. Okay, it's a picture of somebody, of me or, or somebody like me who works hard and you know, doesn't get to enjoy themselves that often. And no, oh, I could do without her little comments, you know, and I mean, honestly, you go to her page, I have a look, she's like the <laughs> fucking joy police, the fun Stasi, going around taking pictures and shame, shame, shame used to be used as punishment. And now we are all supposed to take part and enjoy it. No, I refuse. You know what? I refuse to give in to the cartel my behavior like everybody does now and give in to the secret fucking camera phone spies because those are the moments in life worth living for. The times when you're doing something wrong or embarrassing or illegal, you know, and I just feel like since all these cameras have come, everybody's just stopped living.
And Hannah is a fucking stormtrooper in that regard. You never even liked her. Ugh. Hi, my name is Emily Cates, and I'll be doing a self-written monologue called The Goodbye. Hi. Um, I know I'm a little late, but... Um, hi. I brought you some flowers. They're the red ones that mom grows in their garden. I know you like them, so I brought them. <laughs> you know, Caleb helped me pick them out. He's gonna be in middle school next year, <laughs> isn't that crazy? He's like, this tall. <laughs> He's the one that convinced me to come out here, actually, so he's always doing crazy stuff like that. He always has. This is feeling a little, um, one-sided. Could you say something? I guess I don't deserve that. I also wanted to come here to apologize. That night, it was so long ago and I, I was only 14 and I just, I didn't know what I was doing and, but I knew it was my idea to sneak out of the house and I shouldn't have run ahead. I should have at least held your hand when we crossed the street, but I didn't. And I swear I didn't see the car. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Could you say something? You know, Caleb said you talked to him. He wouldn't tell me what you said, only that it was great to hear your voice again. And Grandma says you can talk too. I called her crazy at the time, but I believe her. So, can you just say something? Please? What am I doing here? You know, I waited until the graveyard closed and hopped the fence like an idiot to talk to you. So I wouldn't look like a freak when this inevitably happened. <laughs> of course it would happen. Because you're not my sister. You're just a rock. No, I didn't mean that. I just, I'm so confused. I'm sorry. I said I was sorry. I, I'm not understanding. I miss you so much, okay? But I never came to come talk to you because I knew that you would blame me because it's all my fault. Of, of course it's all my fault. It's like mom said. It's like mom said. being selfish. I'm sorry. I, I guess I just wanted to say happy birthday. And I miss you. We all do. I love you too.
Thank you. Hello, my name is Olaya Ciccarelli Bermudez, and I will be presenting a monologue from Claire Barron's Dance Nation. I don't care about dance. I don't care. I think the only people who care about dance are people who actually care about dance. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about social dancing. I'm talking about dance. Who cares? Not me. You could be the most famous dancer in the entire world and I wouldn't be impressed at all. I wouldn't even know who you were because I don't give a fuck about dance. And I don't know many people who do, frankly. That's, that's the thing about the world. It's so big that you can always be anonymous. Like, uh, I've done some pretty bad things on the internet. And some days I like freak out thinking maybe somebody's gonna find out all the bad things I've done. I get really anxious and I'm like, oh my God, my life is gonna be ruined. I mean, at some point my life will be ruined if somebody finds out. And that makes me panic. I don't get anxious like I said, but But, then I think, there's always going to be some place I can go and be anonymous. Uh, Libya, maybe, or, or even Japan. France? And also, moreover, there's always going to be some person in the world who doesn't hate me. Like, even if I told them the worst thing I'd ever done. They'd be like, I don't really mind, I don't care. That always makes me feel a lot, a lot better when I'm feeling anxious about the things I've done. <laughs>